Hello, everyone. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. It is now noon. So, David, whenever you're ready, we can start. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Webinar Wednesday, actually on a Tuesday. Um, today, uh, what I'd like to do is um, present to you with Professor Tulia Galina Toschi, uh, a project that we've been working on uh, for about, oh, about nine months or so, looking at the possibility of using electron spin resonance technology for uh, complementing uh, testing in the olive oil industry, more specifically for freshness. Um, and so what I'm going to do is present just the, the product itself and, and the basics of how ESR works. I, I'm actually a product manager at, at Brooker Biospin uh, in, the, in the EPR or the ESR group. And then uh, Professor Toshki is going to show you uh, some actual interesting data that she's acquired over the last eight or nine months uh, using the technique. So uh, many people probably know what ESR is, some maybe not. Uh, it stands for electron spin resonance. It's also known as electron paramagnetic resonance. And it's basically a magnetic resonance technique, uh, similar to NMR, if you're familiar with NMR. But in this case, it's only sensitive to samples that have unpaired electrons. And the kind of sample that frequently has unpaired electrons or materials that oxidize and form free radicals, and we'll see that is the case with uh, lipid and oil containing materials in, in the next few slides. So it's, it's a magnetic resonance technique. It's, um, like I say, similar to NMR, and we're not actually transmitting energy through the sample. Uh, and so it, it, it allows itself to have utility with both solids, liquids, colored, turbid samples. Uh, and basically, uh, if you think of a, of, a, of a lipid molecule or any kind of molecule, if you look at the, at the level of the orbital, there are always two electrons in a stable molecule. Um, and those two electrons are spinning exactly opposite of one another. So when they're in a stable configuration like this, there is really no magnetic moment that we're able to measure. However, when they are oxidized by either ionizing radiation or some sort of chemical oxidation, such as you'll see in our test where we heat and rely on oxidants that are just endogenously in, in, the, in the mixture, you, you can run into the, the situation where you have an unpaired electron now, a free radical, and we can now measure that with our, our electron spin resonance spectrometer. So this is a real brief slide on how it works. Um, if you see the little yellow and orange particles there, those are just sort of a pictorial uh, depiction of, of the unpaired electrons. And in the absence of a magnetic field, they have very tiny, randomly oriented um, magnetic moment to them. But just as an NMR, when we put the sample into a magnetic field, we set up an equilibrium state where these unpaired electrons align with or against the magnet of our spectrometer. You can see on the right there, it's a, a very small spectrometer that we've uh, developed. Uh, these in, in historically have been much larger, less convenient to use instruments. In this case, we have a very small magnet, probably about the size of, of a hockey puck, an ice hockey puck. And what we do then is we irradiate the sample with microwave RF and we sweep the magnetic field. And if unpaired electrons and free radicals are present, when we hit a specific uh, magnetic field for resonance at that given frequency, we will get a transition uh, or a flipping, if you will, of the, the unpaired electron. And we'll then get an absorption of the microwave energy and we generate a signal. And so the more free radical content in the sample, the bigger our signal gets. So how this applies to a lot of materials, such as oils and beverages and things like that in, in the food industry, is as you know, there's always an issue of oxidation, of shelf life, of uh, material going stale. And it's pretty common, um, you can pretty much draw this one picture and it describes it to more or less uh, the chemistry that goes on in, in materials like that. And it usually involves 
oxidants, pro-oxidants such as iron and oxygen, which when they start reacting with various other um, chelators and things in, in, the, in the mixture, they result with this scheme here where we have um, free radicals being produced, in this case from the fatty acids, uh, from the lipids. And as you can see, wherever these form, there are different types, we, we can potentially detect them with our electron spin resonance spectrometer. So we're actually detecting, if we force oxidize our sample, we're actually detecting kind of live the fire as it's burning, as opposed to taking a, sort of an intermediate or an endpoint here where we look at, say, peroxides or an histidine value or ransomat, we're actually measuring it, you know, quite a bit later in the process of the oxidation. So um, the idea is that this could be a great complement for that type of test. So one other aspect of this is these free radicals as they form are un really unstable. They have half-lives on the order of milliseconds. Um, and so one of the things we have to do with this forced oxidation test is to put in what's called a spin trap. And I think um, Tulia has a slide of that later, what it looks like, but it's basically something that is not a free radical. Um, when you add it and, and when you start oxidizing, if you form free radicals, uh, this this spin trap will trap the radical and maintain an unpaired electron, but it will be much more stable, and we can then measure that and use that as a marker of of oxidation as it's ongoing. So we have this this reaction going where we're uh, we're heating it. There's iron, there's oxygen, there's antioxidants. Antioxidants are, are something we might add or try to formulate to to optimize. And of course, you've got the further oxidation, but now you have an agent in there that can trap it and kind of monitor how well uh, the material is performing. So in the end, it comes down to uh, the data that we end up looking at is what we call an oxidation profile. So we are trapping these radicals if, as they form, and each one of these signals here is a data point here. And really it comes down to balancing the antioxidant pool, which is what we want to uh, either formulate or maintain from natural antioxidants as much as possible. And we want to minimize pro-oxidant factors such as storage conditions, processing, uh, exposure to heat and light. But in the end you get this profile which can look um, a number of different ways. In this particular material, there's a metric we call lag time, which is an, sort of an induction period, similar to if you're familiar with, with Ransomat or OSI. Um, and of course, the longer that lag period is, the, the more resistant that, that material is. Others, others will use uh, the area under the curve, and you know, the larger the area over a given time, the more free radical content that formed, and so that's a bad thing. And also an endpoint, just an endpoint which will vary with the kind of material. Some, some types of oil need to oxidize for three hours, and some are less stable and might only need 30 minutes to an hour. So it depends on the material, and that's uh, kind of found out empirically from, from running the assay. This is just a slide that shows uh, where it's been successfully used the last 20 years is in the brewing industry. And each one of these steps here um, is a place where optimization or the ESR technique has been used. Um, things such as the actual filler, um, the crowns, metal contamination in kegs. You know, this would be at the packaging point. Uh, if you go further back upstream, you have the filtration. You have iron in your uh, filtration material and other techniques that you can use to minimize fermentation. You have antioxidants being produced by the yeast. Um, same with the brew house. You have antioxidants coming from the malt that during the hot process of brewing, you, you destroy those and you can optimize and, and minimize the, you know, the, basically the usage of, of your antioxidants so that they remain in the package at the end. So that's just kind of an example of how it's been used in the brewing industry. And, and now we're looking into, um, could it be used similarly in 
the edible oil industry. And so um, we have customers working with it with uh, oils such as soybean oil, canola oil, and such. Um, and we're hoping that it could be an, an early measure of lipid oxidation in vegetable oils. It could help, um, you know, reformulate uh, stripped oils for maximum, you know, um, protection from, from oxidation, and it could provide a quick check for freshness um, and assure quality for a consumer packaged good company that the incoming product is good. And so the similar ways other tests are used, we, we're looking into if this could complement the industry. And basically, the product we've developed over the last year is this uh, very simple um, electron spin resonance spectrometer with a very small magnet, very portable, and we've developed some software that's specific for running this oxidation test and also provided uh, a robot so that um, you can have higher throughput um, than, than you know, putting samples in manually. So we've just um, working on now getting a standard procedure from AOCS, and so we're hoping to, to get that through this fall and, and take it further. So what I'll do now is turn it over to Professor Toski, and she can show you some more specific use of this with, with olive oil measurement. Yes. So, uh, for us, uh, is good evening, <laughs> and uh, I will try to uh, go ahead uh, summarizing uh, some preliminary results uh, that we have uh, obtained with olive oil. So for olive oil, but this is something that can be, uh, it is uh, surely important also for the other oils uh, and in general for added value oils is uh, the development of uh, innovative, fast, handly, robust and standardized methods. In this case, uh, we try to, uh, to uh, try uh, to use the micro SR force oxidation approach to control uh, the freshness or the oxidative state uh, uh, of olive oils. We know, I, I try to see if I have the control, yes, back, the, that uh, uh, some parameters uh, that are peroxide values, K to uh, 132 and 270 in particular, and also the sensory, uh, so the organole some organolytic aspects, uh, the acidity is uh, the one uh, dealing uh, with uh, the oxidation state of the oil, are related uh, with uh, the oxidation state, the freshness, uh, and uh, are useful to predict uh, the shelf life. Here I reported uh, a, a review, a recent review on olive oil quality and authenticity that was done in the framework of the Olium project. And you see also the differences within different regulations, so the problem that we always have of standardization. While uh, spectrophotometric analysis and peroxide value are recognized parameters by uh, the main uh, regulatory frameworks, uh, oxidative stability index uh, or RANSIMAT is widely used and very useful uh, to predict the shelf life or to give information of the shelf life uh, of an oil in respect with another, so to make comparison uh, and is used by the industries, uh, is used uh, also for the for different formulations. You know that, uh, for example, uh, oils uh, are used uh, also for uh, drug delivery, and uh, this uh, is uh, uh, for this kind of uh, um, 
of products uh, is very important to uh, to be able to predict uh, the shelf life uh, of the product uh, in a, a good way. So, I don't know why it's moving. Uh, you see that uh, for the oxidative uh, stability index, uh, we have uh, an OCS official method, an ISO, ISO method, and uh, um, two kind of instrument can be used that are oxidat OSI or uh, RANSIMAT. Uh, the, no, I need to go back. The, uh, yes, here. Uh, the, um, uh, procedure is uh, actually a dynamic oxidation that is conducted uh, at uh, a temperature between 100 and 10 to 130 degrees centigrade. Uh, the uh, measure is indirect, so uh, actually the instrument is measuring the water conductivity that is growing during uh, the dynamic oxidation uh, under a flux uh, of uh, uh, air and uh, uh, the heating of the process. So while uh, the hours are passing, generally we have uh, from three to five hours for the more in saturated the fatty um, yes fatty acid uh, uh, within uh, the oils more in saturated to uh, for example 50 or 60 hours for the more resistant olive oils with uh, general with uh, a higher uh, a very high amount of uh, polyphenols so uh, this uh, kind of uh, instrument is giving uh, an information that in the theory is not uh, very far from the information that they uh, explained before so the uh, with the micro -SR. so the possibility to have a curve that is somehow proportional to the real um, oxidation um, reaction. The real oxidation reaction has a, a starting time, what we can uh, say such as uh, a induction time or a, la a, a lag time, and then a, an exponential phase, and then again at the end a plateau. Uh, what we obtain with the RANSIMAT, you see in the in this slide, is uh, a change in uh, the slope of the curve from uh, a linear and uh, with uh, not a nice slope curve, we have suddenly a change of this slope. Mm, proportional with the higher amount of secondary oxidation products that are, in this case, in the case of Francimat, um, trapped in a way by water uh, in the form of uh, formic acid that uh, is uh, giving uh, this uh, higher, completely dis dissociated, uh, so uh, with the uh, growing of. Uh, uh, the conductivity of the water. So uh, it would be very useful to have another method that is able to summarize the information that we can achieve from peroxide values, from spectrophotometric analysis, and even from a dynamic method such as RANSIMAT or, 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 or oxidative stability uh, instrument. Uh, in this um, 
paper that I am citing, I, I, I report, uh, is, uh, you can see, a prediction model, an hypothesis, because uh, all uh, the researchers uh, all over the world are actually trying to find a way to predict the shelf life of, for example, an olive oil with one or more measurement. Here you see that uh, the researchers are proposing to measure, to set a best before date, considering the lowest of the following three estimations. So the hours of induction time at 110 degrees centigrade with the Rancimat or, or, or oxidative stability instrument, or the a, a calculation based on period of feofitting. I personally think that this is not a good way to predict the shelf life because they are these kind of compounds are not stable at all. Uh, with light, so we could have uh, a behavior in case uh, in which the oil uh, has taken much or less light. So, on my opinion, uh, is not very good uh, uh, way to predict the shelf life of the product. Or another possibility, considering that. Uh, uh, the, the, the acyl glycerols are changing uh, their, uh, um, actually they are hydrolyzing or rearranging and uh, the uh, relationship between them and the free fatty acid is uh, an information useful to date and oil, the last one, maybe with a different calculation or not, could be, uh, could be uh, the future. One of the parameters uh, that uh, I think uh, will be, could be used in future, could be adopted. Uh, to go ahead, so what is peroxide value? We all know uh, the peroxide value is something that uh, with the peroxide value, we are measuring uh, the um, first product, oxidation products, uh, um, so the primary products of the oxidation with uh, the uh, um, spectrophotometric analysis uh, in the ultraviolet region, uh, we are measuring the uh, presence, uh, we are actually uh, quantifying indirectly the presence of conjugated uh, dyne and trine respectively uh, with uh, two wavelengths. In this case, we have a measure of uh, the secondary products, those uh, that are formed in the exponential phase of uh, oxidation. So, considering uh, all uh, these uh, parameters, uh, those uh, that, are, that are already adopted and those uh, that of, are actually of interest, we could uh, try to um, see, uh, and it would be extremely important to see what can, uh, the information that we can uh, achieve with microSR. Uh, so you see in this case uh, the spin trap added uh, with uh, a milliliter of olive oil and uh, heated. We will see soon uh, the different uh, temperature, uh, temperatures we tried and the measurement. Uh, here you have uh, something like uh, a real-time analysis, so it's really very quick uh, from one, uh, one milliliter of olive oil is uh, added uh, with a solution of uh, um, the enterbutyl alpha phenyl 
Neutron, that is uh, the spin trap previously um, solubilized uh, in, uh, the, um, in uh, the ethanol uh, solution. And, uh, and then vortex for uh, 30 seconds, I think is going ahead. Maybe it's a little bit uh, slow. Okay, we see, fine. We go ahead. The, the sample is taken from the vial and inserted in a specific probe. You see that uh, soon it will be uh, transferred and then uh, analyzed. With a scan progress and then again can be transferred in the eating block. This is the, the manual uh, um, use of the instrument but uh, obviously uh, it, it is uh, extremely um, better to use a um, auto sampler because uh, for one sample, you have, uh, we have a number of measures, and uh, so it's uh, important to, uh, to be, it is possible to be quicker with an auto sampler. In this case, you see the kinetics at 70 degrees centigrade. Um, Considering what uh, uh, previously they've uh, uh, presented, you see a part of the, the curve that uh, is of interest. At this temperature for an olive oil, we do not reach the uh, termination uh, phase, what uh, can be called here the T end. But we have uh, a um, line and uh, a number of values of interest. You see the slope of the curve is the value one. The concentration after two measurement is the value two. The concentration after three measurement is the value three. And the concentration of after 12 measurements that are not so hard in case uh, uh, in which uh, we can count uh, of uh, uh, an auto sampler, just uh, 250 minutes uh, of, uh, for the overall analysis, uh, we have the, the final value. At this temperature, we do not reach the uh, T end. Uh, here you see what we are doing actually uh, I said before that is uh, a, preliminar, uh, a preliminary work because we are uh, actually elaborating different uh, um, uh, data uh, to find uh, the correlation that will be useful uh, to have one or more values that can be uh, related with peroxide values, spectrophotometric analysis, and RANSIMAT. This is the final goal. Here you see that uh, the peroxide number is uh, related, uh, such as uh, the K232, uh, while uh, uh, the um, RANSIMAT oxidative uh, stability in index uh, is negatively uh, related. Uh, at 80 degrees centigrade, uh, this is the curve. Uh, what is important? It is important to know 
I mean, for, for a, an industry, it is important to have an internal uh, data bank of values. And this could be even enough, I must say, because uh, uh, if they are have uh, a library of data related uh, with uh, other uh, parameters uh, could be, how can I say, a, a richness in, uh, um, in terms of knowledge of uh, the uh, prediction of the shelf life of the oil. But uh, for us, uh, the uh, goal is uh, uh, wider. So we would like to have something that could be, and this is why I, I'm saying that uh, this uh, is uh, a, a preliminary work, uh, something that can be used uh, as a universal uh, value. What is important is to see the free radicals at the beginning, to see the, the slope of the curve, and to relate it with, uh, yes, surely the shelf life of the oil, but also to uh, understand what we can expect what, when we have a different content of uh, uh, polyphenol, for example. So this is the situation at 80 degrees. Uh, here we have uh, the best correlations uh, of, uh, uh, with uh, peroxide value of uh, um, the second, the third point, uh, the slope, uh, and uh, the uh, free radicals uh, at the beginning, and uh, with uh, the dynes, so the K, at to um, uh, under 32. And the negative correlation uh, with uh, the uh, Ransimat or the Ositine. Uh, this uh, is uh, the elaboration of 55 uh, samples uh, analyzed uh, uh, at 80 degrees centigrade. Then uh, we tried the same temperature I must say we, we tried also other temperatures, but here are selected those uh, that we think are of uh, much interest. Uh, the kinetic uh, at 110 degrees centigrade, you see that the slope is changing. Uh, we have a linear um, uh, graph uh, at the beginning, I would say till uh, the point uh, two, then uh, it starts to be similar with uh, the theoretical curve that uh, was uh, shown by Dave. So at the point three, we are in the condition of uh, uh, the plateau, so the T end, and this uh, is uh, a very uh, useful condition to give information about uh, the sample, because uh, after uh, between 150 and 200 minutes, we have uh, the, uh, I would say, the T end of the oil. Uh, and we can also measure the free radicals at the beginning and the, at the end of uh, the uh, uh, test, so point four. Uh, this is uh, the result of 35 samples analyzed in the always soft olive oil, uh, analyzed in this condition, it was always extra virgin olive oil. Sometimes uh, it was, no, extra virgin olive oil, virgin olive oil. <laughs> and um, you see in this case, uh, uh, in particular, what uh, is uh, very interesting is that the Aussie time correlates uh, with the concentration of free radicals after 12 measurement 
and it shows a negative correlation with the concentration of uh, uh, free radical after two measurements and a correlation with uh, interesting correlation with uh, the T end. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, we need to find, I mean, as I, as I said before, uh, the method can be used, uh, can be very useful for an internal use uh, for a company but uh, now we want to find uh, what the, the, the best condition in terms of temperatures and uh, uh, relation with uh, the other official parameters to see uh, if we uh, can find, uh, apply this method that is working, um, a, 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 how can I say, a data, a, a, a parameter uh, not very similar to those uh, that are proposed uh, in this uh, paper, so new parameters uh, that can be quickly related with uh, the best uh, before date. We do not, uh, I, I'm sure we will not able to have just one value for all the oils, but maybe analyzing also the polyphenols, we will be able to give uh, some range of uh, composition of uh, the oil, have an expected time that could be uh, T end or have uh, information to predict the shelf life given the uh, measure of the radical in these points that we have already selected. This is uh, where we are now and uh, so I'm uh, happy to share these results, even if uh, we are working uh, to achieve a final, uh, a, a final goal that uh, I, I think is not too hard uh, to achieve, but we need uh, to work for a while. <laughs> to find uh, something that can be proposed at this level. Very useful, as uh, I said, uh, we are relating all the measures uh, we are doing uh, for olive oil, for example, uh, uh, those that are doing for some companies uh, with uh, the curve uh, that we can obtain uh, with the micro uh, So this is... Uh, actually the the framework i don't know if uh, there are some questions or suggestions or curiosity i, I see one question has come in um, it says if we use the ransom at and osi in the same sample will we obtain the same result I guess they're asking if yes. you run. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, setting the same conditions, uh, the results are the same, actually, uh, because uh, the strategy is the same. I had I had one question. So um, the the olive oils that you were using. Um, were they the kind that were they very high phenolic content? Were they extra virgin or what? What what type of oils were you using? We, we used the extra virgin olive oil or virgin olive oil. So different uh, different uh, quality, uh, even to have uh, to. Uh, acquire more information and not only with uh, 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 yes with with a, a certain quality 
but the samples uh, were virgin. Okay.